Okay. Let's talk about uh, every Fuji owner should know this information, but I guarantee you that ooh, maybe 98% of them don't know this information. So is this a video about the secrets of Fuji? No. Most secrets in the world are not secrets because they're kept from people. It's just that they're not either widely published or people are generally lazy to investigate. Um, it is the case with any digital camera that cameras are not sensors. Everybody thinks, well, you know, it's all about the sensor, and then that's not the case. You know, images are not rendered by the sensor, but by the AD converters and the SNR firmware and the rest of the stuff that actually processes the image that is actually captured by the lens and the sensor. A digital camera, of course, is an image processor. It processes things just like your computer over here. It is uh, not an image sensor. What about the Fuji and the ISO on Fuji? As I told you before in many, many, many videos, ISO has nothing to do with exposure. Well, sure it is. It's part of the exposure triangle. No, 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 no. ISO is applied gain. Exposure has nothing, excuse me, ISO has nothing to do with exposure. Uh, time and gain have to do uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the level of gain, the efficiency of the sensor, the aperture, the t-stop of the lens, but uh, ISO is applied gain. So what does this have to do with Fuji? This is something important you should know about your Fuji. Your Fuji has more dynamic range for the speculars between ISO 3200 and uh, 25,600. Let's just say the average ISO that people normally use on their Fuji, which is between ISO uh, 3200 and 6400. Then it does between ISO 200 and 1600. Listen closely. Fuji only actually uh, processes and creates genuine raw data files between ISO 200 and 1600. Okay, let me repeat that. <coughs> Fuji only creates real raw data files. You're going to, you know, save your files in raw between ISO 200 and 1600. The actual true ISO range of the Fuji, therefore, is 200 to 1600. And my uh, guy I know named Yannick was asking me questions about this before. ISO uh, 100, for example, is a mathematical divisor, divisor of ISO 200, since we know that the base ISO of the Fuji uses 200. ISO 3200 to uh, 25,600 are uh, multiplicatives of ISO 1600. So yes, ISO 3200, 6400, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and higher are multiplications of ISO 1600. Um, uh, for example, if you overexpose, for example, one uh, key example on ISO 1600, you say you overexpose by two stops on ISO 1600, and you're saving a raw file. You're screwed. You've blown your highlights because that is the upper limit of the true raw data ISO of the Fuji. But, for example, at ISO 3200, or ISO 6400, you expose, uh, and you're fine because you have one stop or say two stops in ISO 6400. Your, uh, your overexposure is actually an underexposure of one or two stops, two stops in the case of ISO 6400, where you can actually uh, uh, extract or recover the blown uh, specular highlights. Um, by simply moving your exposure sliders uh, in your uh, raw converter uh, software application. This means also that for maximum uh, shadow detail extraction, if you wanted to say, for example, have a greater uh, exposure compensation of one stop, uh, greater exposure, excuse me, if you wanted to have a maximum uh, shadow detail extraction at ISO 3200, well, let's just take ISO 6400 and I'm shooting in a low light situation and I wanted to extract uh, possible shadow details that I might want to uh, use uh, exposure compensation. I might want to actually overexpose by a, a stop or a stop in three quarters at ISO uh, 6400. Since ISO 6400 is actually a multiplicative of the ISO 1600 on the Fuji, so the conditions between ISO 3200 and 6400, for example, I can actually overexpose on those since I have a lot more headroom, wiggle room, leeway on uh, my speculars before they are blown. Uh, ISO 1600 and ISO 6400 shots are uh, the exact same exposure as far as the raw data that's created. Their image data 
is exactly the same. It's only the metadata attached to those specific raw files of that particular image that are different. And metadata, of course, is uh, merely the instructions for the application of your raw converter um, to be told how to render the image for viewing. So if you have this in mind, then you aren't able to understand that well, I could shoot this one of two different ways. Let's say I'm in a shady situation and, uh, you know, I've got my Fuji. And uh, I know that if I uh, shoot for, you know, the clipping point, too close to the clipping point, or possibly go over at ISO 1600, then I got no wiggle room because that's the true limit of the true raw data file that's actually recorded on the Fuji, which is between 200 and 1600. But if I'm shooting at ISO 6400, there's two things to consider. You're actually shooting a multiplicative of ISO 1600 in which uh, uh, the metadata is different. It is really an exposure at ISO 1600. Now I know you're thinking, well, you know, if I actually am at ISO 6400, I'm going to change my aperture and my shutter speed to compensate for seeming perfect exposure, and that is correct. And that is also why I said at ISO 6400, or ISO 3200, but 6400, for example, you know, I can actually, uh, if I'm shooting in manual mode, I can actually uh, direct my camera via shutter speed or aperture to uh, overexpose by, uh, you know, depends on the composition that you want. But if I want to extract more shadow detail without clipping my highlights at ISO 6400, I might want to overexpose by stop to a stop and three quarters. By knowing this info, you know, knowledge is power. So by knowing this information, you know what your Fuji is actually doing. It only is actually generating, you know, true ISO uh, RAWs between ISO 200 and 1600. Everything above 1600 is just a multiplicative of 1600. And ISO 100, for example, is uh, merely a divisor of ISO 200. You know, on the top end it's being pushed, and on the bottom end it's being pulled. So, you know, the difference is in the metadata if you're talking about the exact same exposure. Now, if I'm up at ISO 6400 and I'm taking the exact same shot that I was taking at ISO 1600, and ISO 6400 is obviously the exact uh, same, um, you know, it's the, uh, the same raw file uh, as uh, ISO uh, 1600, and the only difference is the metadata, uh, then I know I have a uh, wiggle room to mess with, and I know that if uh, by closing down my aperture to get the, what would seem to be on uh, my exposure meter, the correct exposure, but, and this is also too, and I'm talking about the head honchos, it's the conic. And actually one of the secrets of light meters, but studio strobe photography work ain't working at ISO 1600. The secret of like professional light meters that they won't tell you, and I've had one of the head honchos at Siconic tell me this fact, is that, um, and this kind of is a secret, is that all light meters, even the very, very best ones, are junk at like 1600 and above. So it doesn't matter how you've got the, your uh, camera calibrated, they totally start to deconstruct their actual value and usefulness. But that doesn't make a damn bit of difference because the reality is is that for a studio work, which is 90% stroboscopic work and studio work, you're not working at those levels of ISO. I actually had, I won't name his name, the head honcho of Siconic actually tell me that. But anyway, getting back to Fuji, if you know that ISO 6400 is, uh, you know, dist different metadata, that the image data is the same if given the same exposure, if you're actually adjusting your aperture or your shutter speed value to match seeming perfect exposure as your camera is telling you at ISO 6400, then you know that you're only clipping the light towards uh, what the image is being processed at in your camera, and therefore you are going to have less shadow detail for extraction because an ISO 6400 shot if you've taken the exact same shot at ISO 1600 and you bump it up to 6400 it's like well now I need to adjust to uh, close down my aperture some and or increase uh, my shutter speed you have less detail for shadow extraction
And that is why, for one example, if I thought maybe I'd want to extract more shadow detail, since you have your exposure sliders for, you know, changing the exposure on your uh, your speculars or your shadow speculars being highlights, as I was brought up. We talk about speculars instead of highlights. Same thing. That I, uh, you know, that I have more latitude if I, I'm going to shoot an ISO 6400 to set um, an overexposure according to my camera by stop or stop and three quarter. And this is where the wiggle room or the highlight room exists on your Fuji camera above ISO 1600. So I bet most of you didn't know that. So. Um, if you want to check with any of the Fuji gurus on that, they'll actually tell you the exact same thing um, because they've actually talked about this very, very same thing. And uh, this isn't my opinion. This is actually a fact of Fuji. So, Thanks for watching. That was in response to a question I've been asked a couple times recently by Yannick and uh, one other person. Okay, bye.